Good morning and welcome to Limitless Live. I'm your host, Gary Tussie, uh, alongside no one because Miss Julie has gone to visit grandchildren out of state. So I'm soloing today and that'd be all right. We're, uh, our prayers are up for Julie and her uh, uh, enjoyable visit with the grandchildren. Thank you for joining us today. We're delighted to see spring come in, and I know you are too. It, it, it seems to never come soon enough, and we're seeing some buds on the trees and the grass starting to get green again, so it's wonderful to, uh, to, to see that. I uh, want to uh, let you know we appreciate you being with us today, and uh, the Word of God that we put forth, it, it falls on ears that are ready and able to hear, listen, and act upon it, and that is encouraging to me as a Bible teacher, and uh, we appreciate your testimonies and your comments in the uh, comment section of Facebook. We are on Facebook Live and YouTube Live right now, and we are thrilled to have that technology working for us. Speaking of technology, we're able to use cutting edge technology, for to use a cliche, uh, cutting edge technology because of our VIP members, those of you who give financially on a regular basis, and we thank you for that. There are so many who give, uh, give regular every 30 days and help us to uh, to meet our financial obligations, to be able to have um, up, updated, upgraded equipment to be able to bring a quality program to you. Well, I have to mention that every time because without our, our financial support of people who love us, we would not be able to share the gospel like we do. And so I never take you for granted. Miss Julie never takes you for granted. We are thrilled about you and uh, delighted that you're with us uh, here on a, on a regular basis. And you know that we're here for you. You can, uh, you can email us, you can uh, phone, phone us uh, and give us your testimony, your prayer requests. As a matter of fact, that prayer line is 859-519-0239. It's 859-519-0239, 859-519-0239. You can call and leave a prayer request, leave it on a voicemail, and we'll agree with you in prayer. If you like a call back so that we pray with you personally on the phone, you just let us know that in the message, and we'll phone you back and we'll pray together. One puts a thousand to flight. Jesus said this. But two puts 10,000 to flight. That blows my mind to think of the power of agreement, how the, the power is increased just because we agree. So uh, that's part of the, uh, part of the uh, luxury, so to speak, or the power that's in people agreeing with us. By giving financially, you're saying you're, you're agreeing with us, and we thank you. Thank you so much. And for those of you who just give occasionally or give when you want, uh, want to give or on occasion, thank you. Every one of you are so valuable and precious to us. We have an app, and the app is free to you. It is paid for by the VIP members and partners who give financially, but it's free to you to have on your phone. It is the Gary and Julie Tussie Ministries app, G-J-T-M, or Gary and, Tuss Gary and Julie Tussie Ministries app. You get it in your app store or you get it on Google Play. And that is, the advantage to having the app is at any time you can, re, you can resource our uh, library of teachings. Uh, you can directly be in touch with the uh, podcast, the uh, Julie Tussie Show, or the Real Gary Tussie, or the Grace Girls podcast. 
we produce three podcasts, and they are on iHeartRadio and anywhere that podcasts are carried, iTunes, uh, anywhere podcasts are carried, you're going to find those those podcasts but the best way to stay connected is on that app so go get the app tell others about the app get it on your phone and you can also get this live stream regardless where you're at what you're doing if you have the app you can get the live stream at the same time so uh, that's something I probably need to mention and that is we are on Facebook YouTube and on the app at the same time uh, bringing you this uh, wonderful connection with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let's pray together and let's expect great things for our time together today. Heavenly Father, thank you for the privilege of coming before your word today. Thank you that we can gather every two or three that are gathered in your name. You're right there in the middle of us to achieve your will and accomplish your purpose in the earth. We desire to be used of you, O God, above all things. We desire to be used of you and glorify you. If people do not know you as Lord and Savior, may they come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ today. Those of you who are in need, those who are in need of a healing today, may they may they be introduced to Jesus, the healer. Those Heavenly Father who have uh, malady or uh, anxiety or uh, undue stress in their life, may they come to the realization that uh, you never put on us more than we're able to bear and that you ca- we are to cast all of our care on you because you care for us. You take care of the caring department. We give you the praise and glory for that. So we're rolling all of our cares over on you today, Jesus, to allow you to be God in our lives. Nothing is bigger than you, Jesus. Nothing is bigger than you in our lives. We decree that and we just believe it to be so and we act that way in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. If you have your Bibles, let's go ahead and get in the Word today. I love bringing you the Word. That's the whole purpose for this live stream every uh, Sunday morning at nine o'clock. And so we're going to do that again today. We're soon going to be bringing you music. Uh, The reason we've not brought you music yet is the want to make sure that it is a high quality uh, transmission. (laughs) So we are uh, honing the the ability to be able to, and occasionally we do put music videos on, but you've got to understand those music videos took a lot of time and a lot of hours to get them presentable to be out there on uh, on a live stream so other music we're working on just takes a while to get it to get it right so that it is a uh, good quality programming so we're excited about that music is a big deal with us uh, both of us miss julie and myself and so we'll be bringing you more and more of that if you have your bibles turn to james chapter 5 I didn't even have it marked, but this is where I want to go today. James chapter 5. We want to look at saying and praying. I titled this today, Say It, Pray It, and Say It. Pray It and Say It. I just had James in it. Here it is. Pray It and Say It. A lot of people negate their prayer life by their saying life. And we're going to look at that and how to overcome that. After they've prayed something, they're not saying something, and therefore they're not living something. And uh, that's that oftentimes, the majority of that is the main malady of people not getting results with their Christian success. All Christian endeavor, all endeavor, period, is successful based on prayer life or prayer living in the in a Christian and a believer's life. And we are going to uh, help to understand that a little bit today. James chapter 5, verse 16, Confess your faults one to another and pray. That means be vulnerable with each other. Pray one for another that you may be healed. The word healed means restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. And I'm going to read kind of fast here until I get to the text that I really want to point out today. That you may be healed. That means restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. And then the pastor, James, the only pastor used to record anything in the uh, in, in the scripture, goes on to say, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That means the white-hot, effective prayer 
of a man in right standing, man or woman in right standing with God, makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. So we want to stop right there a minute. Prayer life and prayer living is to make tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. It's to make us to be able to, at all times, be full of life and be full of power. We know that Jesus walked in his earthly ministry full of life and full of power. And why are we not? Because Jesus said, these things that I've done, words of Jesus, these things that I've done will you do and greater things than these because I go to my Father. And he is with the Father now and he has ascended up on high. So more and more is uh, available to us as believers to be able to tap into the power and glory of God to see effect the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. Effective, white hot, effective, effectual means effective. So I want you, if you're frustrated in your prayer life or you're frustrated with your Christian life, I want you to hear me today because I can help you to overcome that. I can help you to be confident in, in, uh, in your prayer life. I can help you to be confident in your walking it out living by faith. That's what we're here for, to encourage you in that and to give you instruction and in righteousness to help you to be able to be stronger in your walk with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's the whole reason we're here, baby. So hang in there with us and uh, don't go anywhere today. Uh, hang on. Now here's the verse I wanted to get to. Elijah. Now remember, James was just talking about effective prayer, effective white hot prayer of a man in right standing with God makes tremendous, somebody say tremendous, somebody put tremendous in the comment section, tremendous, not a little bit to get you by, not to hope someday we're going to get through, but makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. Oh yeah. The, the prayer of a man in right standing with God makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. And then James gives us an example. And I love this. Uh, uh, James chapter 5, verse 17. Elijah was a man. Some of you need to say that. And some of you need to say it with all the Bible characters. They're not superheroes. Every one of them had their flaws. Heaven uses men and women of flaws. Understand that. Men and women who are not perfect in any way because there's no such thing as a perfect human being. Moses was a murderer. David was a murderer. These are, these are strong icons of the Old Testament who have brought us around to where we are today. These are men, David was a ruddy teenager, redheaded teenager with freckles and was uh, uh, unseemingly able to go up against a giant, but he went up against a giant in the name of the Lord and he prevailed. Uh, he, the Heavenly Father always uses unlikely, unlikely host to do his will in the earth. So Elijah was a man. Elijah was a man. You're a man. You're a woman. Elijah was mankind. Elijah was mankind exactly like you, subject to like passions as we are, sub exactly subject to like passions as we are. If he wore pants, he put them on the same way as you. If you wore robes today, you'd be putting them on the same way he put his robe on back in the day, and we do know that he wore a robe. And doesn't mean that he didn't wear uh, trues or some sort of trouser, which was unlikely at that time. Anyway, that's for another time. But he was subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly. He prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. He prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth, it, forth its fruit. Now let's take a good look at Elijah. That prayer he's talking about, is the prayer when he stood before Ahab and said, Ahab, it's not going to rain until I say it's going to rain. The scripture calls that a prayer. Notice he didn't address heaven. 
He didn't even address the weather. He addressed the man of authority in that day, Ahab. He said to Ahab, it is not going to rain. It is not going to rain until I say it's going to rain. That was his prayer. The scripture says that was, James says that was his prayer. And that uh, this was an earnest prayer that it might not rain. And it, didn't, and it didn't rain on the earth until he said again, for three years and six months, it did not rain until he said again, and, and then the rain came. Now, saying and praying are never, ever to be separated. Men and women lose ability to gain success in their prayer living because as soon as they've done what they think is prayer, they go away from praying something to saying something totally off, off beaten path of what they just prayed. So they negate what they just prayed by what they say. They make null and void what they prayed by interjecting what they say, not being the, thy word let me say this. Let me quote a few scriptures for you. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The, the word is a watch over our own mouth. We have got to fill our mouth with the word of God. In doing so, in doing so, we pray the will of God and we say the will of God. Now, it's interesting. Elijah was no different than me and you. The scripture said that he prayed that it might not rain. It didn't rain. Well, the only recorded prayer we have of him is his speaking to Ahab. And his speaking to Ahab activated be, be, by his saying, there is no difference. Let me show you this. Go over to Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. O generation of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So whether you're evil or whether you are renewed by the Spirit of God, you are speaking from the abundance of your heart. Every man, woman, boy, and girl speaks from the abundance that is in their heart. Verse 35, a good man out of the good treasure or good deposit of the heart brings forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. So a good man or evil man speak from the abundance of their heart. Now, we can say prayers by memorization, although Jesus said they're unaffected. We can do what we call prayer. We can even recite the Lord's Prayer and doing that by memory or doing that just simply by rehearsal doesn't mean that your heart is full of it. Okay, but what is in your heart in abundance will stand the test of time in your saying life. Your praying life must not be separated from your saying life. James the pastor once again said it like this, the tongue is a small thing and it's unruly. And if you can tame the tongue, you can tame the whole body. You can determine the direction in which your whole body will go just by taming the tongue. The tongue, let's understand it like this. The tongue is, the tongue is the rudder on a big ship that turns the big ship where it's going to go, it being such a small thing, but it turns the entire ship. Your tongue being such a small thing determines the direction of your entire life. Out of the abundance of your heart, out of the abundance that is in your heart, you're going to speak. Your speech will betray you every time. Your speech will tell people where you're at, what you believe, how you're going to act, and how you do act, and how you've acted in the past. And these things are unavoidable reality that in the way that we are created. So, Jesus said, O generation of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? They can't because their heart is full of evil. 
Unless your mind is renewed on the word of God, you are not filled with the goodness of God to speak forth the goodness of God, to be able to have and be successful in the things of God. But let's turn that the other way. Let's say that you are filling your mind with the word of God at all times. And then uh, we have to put a watch over our mouth because the tongue wants to speak things that are not the word and will of God because the mind is in enmity against God. It is contrary to the things of God. Neither can it even be subject to the things of God. So we have got to fill our inner man to fullness with the presence of God by his word. Somebody said one time, how can I know that I can hear the voice of God? Then other people scoff and say, you can't hear the voice of God. You can hear the voice of God by the scripture. He said it all in the word. He said it all in the word. So how much of the word or do you even have knowledge of? Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And we need to teach on that sometime. I'll probably bring it up soon. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. When you get this scripture, when you get these scriptures in you, in your inner man, when you get these scriptures where they've dripped from your brain into your heart. Your heart is filled with goodness. You are a good man with good treasure. You are a good woman with good treasure. Now, imagine if Elijah said unto Ahab, Ahab, it is not going to rain until I say it's going to rain. And then what if he turned to his, uh, his associate prophets and said, boy, I hope that worked. I don't want to be embarrassed. Hey, that's how many people, that's how many people live their life today. He did not leave there saying, I hope this works. I don't want to be embarrassed. He knows that what he says, what he prays and what he says is the same thing and it will come to pass. Number one, know that what you pray and what you say shall come to pass. I'm going to show you that in a minute as well. These are all words of Jesus. I haven't made these up. For some reason we don't... Um, we don't unlock the truth and the reality that we ought to be living in that Jesus himself has, has instructed us. The scripture says that the Holy Spirit is the teacher of the church and he will show you things to come. He is the spirit of the truth. The word is truth. This is a record of the word of God. The word of God is truth and he will, the Holy Spirit, lead us and guide us into all truth. So you're not left on your own to try to figure this out like a math book or like a science book. You are being taught, instructed by the Holy Spirit every time you open the book. And there are teachers set in the church. If you need to call them and ask them to help to understand, remember, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Knowledge, understanding, wisdom. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. These things have to apply when you begin your trek of understanding and walking in the things of the Word of God. Are you getting anything out of this? Somebody give me some love here today. On, and those of you who are, let me see who's on, who's not, if I can. Oh, Kelly, good morning. Roy, Luana, good morning. Good morning, Julie. Julie is with the grandbabies. Thank you for all the love. Appreciate that, although I think that was Julie. So if you all give me some love, that's kind of like an amen. Give me a heart. I appreciate that. And, uh, and still, in the comment section, I'd like for you to comment tremendous. Because that's our word for today. Tremendous. Tremendous power is available to you. You're no different than any other Bible icon. You are the thing, baby. You are going to be used by the Holy Spirit. You are a light. You are a light in the world. You are the light of the world. You are a city set on a hill. You are a candle set upon a, ca upon a candlestick to illuminate the entire room. You are the light, baby. It is you right now that the Holy Spirit is going to use in this end time to accomplish His will and glorify the Heavenly Father. I'm telling you, you are it, baby. You are it. You are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God has before ordained that you should walk in them. All right. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart brings forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure, evil deposit, brings forth evil things. Notice the, the 
well, let me just read it right out. O generation of vipers, how can you being evil speak? Speak, speak. You being evil speak good things, for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart brings forth good things. So words that we speak produce things. Your life and as it surrounds you right now, that you are living in and that you are walking in is the lump sum of what you have believed and what you have said for all these years up to right now. You can shape and hone the direction and the influence of your life by the words that you speak and you have got to on purpose speak the words of God. How can I know that I'm speaking the will of God? You've got to speak His Word. His Word is plain. And I'm not talking about merely uh, quoting Scripture. I'm talking about uh, His Word living rich in you till you believe it as it has dropped from your brain or your consciousness into your heart, which gets into your subconsciousness so that it's just there on retainer at all times and you're speaking the good will of God and bringing forth good things. But I say unto you that every idle word, let's talk about the idle word for a minute. Every idle word, I like to say it like this, that an idle word is a word that doesn't have an address. In prayer living, and I'll touch on this a little bit, you get more of this in our prayer studies, which I love teaching prayer, and so you can get a lot of that over on YouTube right now. But there are five realms that uh, praying and saying address, and that is the throne of God, the angelic, the human, the natural, and the demonic hordes of hell five realms that your words are supposed to be addressing on a daily basis. If you just throw words out there and you have no purpose for them and they don't have an address to where they're going, I mean, to the Heavenly Father, to the throne of God, is to be directed praise and worship at all times. Praise and worship and thanksgiving. Praise, worship, and thanksgiving. And we've got to be busy about that. Uh, I won't get into all that right now because we've got a complete study on it over in uh, over on uh, YouTube and on the app. You can get it on the app, a complete study in prayer. We need to rethink prayer because uh, it makes tremendous, I put that in the comment section, tremendous, tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, guess what? You're still going to give account of it. Every word that passes through our lips, we're going to give account of. We want every word to be full of glory, full of thanksgiving, full of life, full of peace, full of uplifting, full of edification, full of life coming off of our lips. Somebody says that's hard to do. It is hard to do if you don't renew your mind on the Word of God. If you know more about what Fox News and CNN is saying than you do about the Word of God is saying, it's funny to me, every time there's a war, everybody ramps up the fact that it's the end of time. Well, it's no more or less the end of time with what happens with wars and rumors of wars. Jesus said there's going to be wars and there's going to be rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. But yet, what do we do? We talk about wars. We talk about rumors of wars and we get troubled. The exact thing that Jesus said not to do. This is, a, this is a, an example of what I mean by believing and acting upon the Word of God, this is where He speaks to you. He just said to you, when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that you be not troubled. These things have to come to pass, but the end is not yet. To say that a war or a rumor of war is the end is a misnomer because Jesus said there'll be false prophets, there'll be wars, rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled because the end is not yet. And I couldn't speak much plainer. Good morning, Frederick. Good morning, Liz. Good morning. Thank you for that uh, encouragement, Liz. She says she's enjoying every word. Now, we've got to begin to shape the words coming out of our mouth to be shaped by the Word of God. Again, wherever you are leaning your attention to is what's going to build an abundance in your heart. 
This is why we say it all the time, there's no substitute for Bible study. You got to know what the Bible said. You got to read it for yourself. Let me give you a little key here. If you want to understand one word in the scripture, you've got to understand, you got to get a hold of the whole, of the whole verse. If you want to under, understand that verse, get the whole chapter. To understand that chapter, read the whole book. You need to consume this in books, not three chapters at a time. They're not that long. Uh, in New Testament and stay, get in the New Testament and stay there, baby. I'm not saying disregard the old. I'm telling you, we, the kingdom of God is now preached. The law and the prophets were until John, but now, right now, the kingdom of God is preached. And that's what we've got to, that's what we've got to encamp round about and allow our mind to be full of understanding the now, the kingdom of God. All right. That's for another time as well. Verse 37 of Matthew 12, For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be, shall be condemned. Now, interesting thing. We are, Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. In other words, Elijah was a man no different than me or you. Elijah was justified in having it not rain any longer because of his words, regardless of what I'm sure Ahab scoffed at it. But, but Elijah didn't. Elijah said it's not going to rain, and his conviction was it's not going to rain. For by his words, he was justified by the words that he spoke. Let me give you a little simple truth right here. Now, this is good. So hang in there with me and get this stuff. What other people say about you and what other people say about what you believe and what other people say about you is of no consequence to you whatsoever. Yet we form the shape of our lives around the opinions of others pointed to us. And this is not glorifying God or Heavenly Father. You are, this gets to where we've got to begin to understand you are unique. There's not another you created like you anywhere on the planet. And there is... Um, simple little acts of obedience that you're going to commit in your walk with Jesus that no one else is going to be able to commit to. Only you. You've got to understand that. That's why you are so valuable and precious. We are experiencing and will continue to experience um, tremendous revival in the earth where the, the, the word of God shines bright and brighter than ever. But this is a, a result of those who are praying on a regular basis and saying that revival comes, although they're never in a position to deliver it. They're never in a position to speak a word like I'm speaking. They're never in a position to uh, believe that the Holy Spirit has dropped in their heart to purchase a mobile stage at $37,000 to be able to take this gospel to the street and work with pastors and, uh, and anywhere in, on, uh, in the Western Hemisphere, praise God. And plus, if we wanted to, we could put it on a boat and go anywhere with, with it and uh, set up and preach the gospel. I'm convinced of that being the will and plan of God for us. And I don't have $37,000, but I have the vision. He gave me the vision. Understand this about the, uh, about the personal challenge of the Holy Spirit in your life. He is never going to challenge you to do something you can afford or that you feel equipped to do. He's going to constantly challenge you to do things that you have to get outside of your comfort zone. Otherwise, you're leaning on the flesh and you are promoting the flesh instead of relying upon the Spirit of God. I even, I never struggle over what I'm going to be bringing to you at live stream every Sunday morning or even when I preach anywhere in a pulpit or teach in a Bible study or whatever. You know why? Because I'm a firm believer that He will put words in my mouth to say, It comes with the call, baby. It comes with the assignment that I will open my mouth and I will speak as a, as, as a, uh, my tongue and be the pen of a ready writer. I will speak as of the oracles of God because he said that I would open my mouth and he would fill my words. And that goes for you too. Anybody getting anything out of this today? I'm still kind of noticing. Usually Julie's the one who notices uh, who's on and who's not on. Elrena, good to see you this morning. Liz, good morning. Frederick, Frederick saying that this is powerful. I'm glad you're feeling that way because it empowers you. 
It empowers you. There is no differentiation between praying and saying. I'm going to show you this again. I just pointed out in Matthew 12. Now I'm going to uh, point it out in Mark 11. Elijah prayed a prayer. The scripture said, James on his commentary said that Elijah prayed a prayer. And as we examine that prayer, we realize it was not an in the name of Jesus, amen type prayer. It was a speaking directly to the king of authority, the man in position of authority, the highest position in, at that time in uh, the region, in the earth. And Elijah spoke words to that man. He said words, and that is called prayer, praying and saying there's no difference. I'm going to show you this. And this is why our words are so vitally important. You've got to understand, let me say it like this. I'm trying to say it in every way possible to help you to get this. Every word you say is a prayer. Well, somebody says, well, that takes all the fun out of it. No, it doesn't. I'm telling you, this is where the fun starts, baby. This is where the, uh, the, the we turn into Action Jackson, baby, but right here, because we have such power given by us by the Holy Spirit. And again, those words that you're saying come out of your, coming out of your innermost being, your innermost, uh, your heart, your innermost being are shaping and have shaped your life that you're surrounded in on a regular basis. You can begin. I love James said you can begin to turn that life by such a small rudder, uh, like the rudder on a ship. That's your tongue. You can begin to shape it, move it, turn it, build it by the words that come out of your mouth in abundance out of your heart. You will constantly speak out of the abundance of your heart. You will constantly speak out of the abundance of your heart. Jesus went to a fig tree one day and there was no fig on it uh, to eat. And so he cursed the fig tree one day. The next day, the disciples and Jesus walked by it. Jesus would have continued to walk. But Peter said to Jesus said, look at the fig tree that you cursed is dried up from the roots. So now this is an object lesson for all the disciples and understand anything and everything Jesus ever did was for the benefit of training men and women of God. And so these men are about to get a lesson in what happened to that tree and also what happens in life. The tree is a type of life, praise God, and what happens in life. And Jesus said, have faith in God. He literally said, have God's faith. Have God's faith. He literally said, have God's faith. Now, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say, what did he say? Whosoever shall say, not pray, say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that the things which he says. So we're talking about saying. The things that he says shall come to pass. Guess what? He'll have whatever he says. Therefore, I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire when you pray. There you go. Jesus is not separating saying from praying. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So that believing mechanism comes out of the abundance of the heart, but your brain is always going to challenge it. Your brain is always going to challenge it. One thing that comes along with living this thing for a while is you, you begin to have more trust. The Lord has brought me through things and he's going to see me through this one again. And if he sees me through it and it's not like the way he's seen me through it before, that's fine. He's still going to see me through it. He's going to see me through it. Now, Always we are challenged by the natural elements of the earth and by opinions of other people being shaped by opinions of other people. These things have got to not sway you in the slightest. You've got to have confidence in yourself. You've got to, these are they by, you talk about the sower sows the word. These are they by the wayside. 
where the root, where where the word is sown, they sprung up uh, with gladness. But when afterwards, when affliction or persecution arise for the word's sake, they having no root in themselves, and so endured for a time. You've got to have root in yourself, not root. Listen, by your words you're justified, and by your words you're condemned. Not by your pastor's words are you justified. Not by your teacher's words are you justified. But by your words you're justified, and by your words you're condemned. So what we've got to do is not allow the opinions of others to shape our lives. When we do that, it is our shape in our own lives, but in the light of what others say about us instead of what the Word of God says about us. All right. So it's in there, and you're only getting tidbits. How are we doing on time? Oh my word, I thought we'd be short today, and we're not. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. And when you stand praying, I could go into all this. Again, we have Bible teaching, in-depth Bible teaching on prayer over on YouTube and on the, on the app side, Gary and Julie Tussie Ministries app. Get over there and get that teaching uh, going in your life so you understand prayer. I'm telling you, man, the success that you have in Christian, your Christian experience is based on praying and saying oh, over and over. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have aught against any that your Father, which is in heaven, may also forgive you your trespasses. Jesus is saying all of this is null and void if you don't walk in forgiveness in your own heart. He goes on to say, but if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive you your trespasses. So again, I'm coming around to saying this. Everything that the Scripture brings us and breaks down as a matter of truth that works in us with tremendous power is all based on the love of God. You are not going to be able to forgive others until you have a revelation of how you've been forgiven. You have been forgiven much, therefore you must forgive much. Praise God. Are you getting anything out of this today? You have been loved. Behold what manner of love, what kind of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when He shall appear, we shall be like Him because we're going to see Him as He is. That unveiling of seeing Him as He is happens on a daily basis as we gain revelation, knowledge of the Word of God in our hearts and in our lives. And what He is is a forgiver of sin. He does not hold trespasses against us. Oh yeah, you can forgive. Did you know we're to love those who do not love us in return? Jesus said, what thank have you if you love those who love you back? You have got to love those who are incapable of loving you back. You've got to do good to them that despitefully use you. You've Come on now. You've got to do good to them that despitefully use you and those who uh, ridicule you and persecute you. You've got to love them. That's where the power of this thing actually takes hold on the inside. And the Holy Spirit will help you with that. The Holy Spirit will help you with that. He'll build in you that which you're not able to do yourself, and that's to have love toward humanity that you never thought possible. Let me tell you how this begins. Is first of all, know how much He loves you. You cannot outrun His love. You cannot separate yourself from the love that He has towards you. He loves you and calls you by your name on a daily basis. Are you hearing Him and coming to Him? I hope you've gotten something out of this today. I'm Gary Tussie, and you're watching Limitless Live. And uh, Miss Julie's absence today. She'll be back next Sunday. Far as we know, she, she's a wild one because never know what comes up with her and she can make it or not make it. But in the meantime, we're getting it together, aren't we? And uh, so I hope you've gotten something out of this. Make tremendous power available, dynamic in its work. And Heavenly Father, all those under the sound of my voice right now, I decree that their life in praying and saying is revolutionized, that something has been said to enlighten them, to cause them to come to the knowledge of the truth, to cause them to come to the power of God and uh, live it to the abilities of the Holy Spirit in them and not just their flesh, not their flesh whatsoever. No flesh glories in the presence of God. For those of you who've never been born again, it's easy. I always go over this with you every live stream. All you've got to do is turn from sin. That's not enough. 
You cannot just do that. You've got to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Believe in your heart God raised him from the dead because with the heart man believes unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation or deliverance. So you've got to tell somebody that you've been born again, that you've accepted Jesus as your Savior, and you're born again. You are born again. Can't stress that enough. If you have trouble saying that to people, say it in your mirror over and over till it becomes easy to you. Then you'll find it easy to say it to people. I, without shame, am born again. I'm a different man. I'm a new species of being that has never before existed. It's called the new birth. I'm born again by the Spirit of the living God. It is that easy. I decree healing for those who are in need of healing today, maybe under the sound of my voice. Some of you deal with chronic uh, injury, uh, the, the just kind of like the remnant of a, of a chronic injury from long ago. I'm decreeing healing in that and uh, malady to cease and the pain to stop and the discomfort. Some people just sent, just deal with discomfort and the Holy Spirit doesn't want you to have to put up with that. And I'm telling you that by the Spirit of God, you can be healed and restored from that. Those of you in need of finances, I believe that this is what it takes, baby. Wisdom and knowledge cause you to come. He'll give you witty inventions. He'll give, he'll open doors for finance you never knew were there before. Why? Because he is our provider. He is our provider. He is our provider and you cannot outgive God. Well, you know, I believe many of you, you are born again believers. You love Jesus and uh, you, you are, because you are born again believers, you understand giving into financially into the kingdom of God. All Julie and I ask you to do on a regular basis is to pray about whether some of your giving needs to come in this direction or not. Uh, you can, Julia put in the comments where to give, save me the trouble of doing it. I didn't write it down. I, I knew I would forget something today. That's one of the two things I forgot. The other thing is putting powder on my face. I hope it's not too shiny today. Maybe you wouldn't have even noticed if I hadn't mentioned it, but I get... There's just a lot to do to get these live streams going. I mean, there's a huge checklist just to get the live. It's not like turn on a camera and go. There's so much that we've got to do that uh, is just, um, you know, amazing that I pull it off. I do it by the Holy Spirit every week, but seemingly I seem to forget things occasionally. But we love the fact that you are a believer and you're giving. You are giving somewhere. We're just asking you to pray to see if maybe the Lord would deal with you or is dealing with you about giving into this ministry. We have budget just like everyone else. The app is free to anyone who wants it, but it cost us $200 a month to maintain it and to be able to service it and keep it updated and all that. So your financial gifts help us to perpetuate that. I think I said that right, to perpetuate that <laughs> as if I didn't say it right before, I just didn't say it right again, but to be able to keep that going. And it is a big deal to us that you, that you, uh, that you uh, partner with us financially. We appreciate you so much. And I'm saying thank you in advance for those of you who are givers. Bless those Heavenly Father who are giving financially into this ministry and as they give elsewhere because they're giving into the kingdom and it's all going to the edification of the body of Christ to perform the will of God in the earth before Jesus comes. I hope you've gotten something out of this today. You leave a comment there. I want to see tremendous in the comments because that's what's available to you. Tremendous power is available every day in your life and you can live to it. So uh, until next time, this is Gary Tussey reminding you that Jesus is alive and well and his word is working in the earth today.
Everybody in here, put your hands in the air. Come on. 